It's already done. It's already done. The love of the Father revealed in the Son. So open your heart. Up. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Virtual Kisses. We're bringing you a dose of good news. My name is Tanya and my good friend Elsa are here to talk to you. As you can see in the ticker tape below, it says nothing is going to break my stride. So <laughs> I um, welcome everybody on and I'm going to pass it over to my good friend Elsa and she's going to tell you what going to break my stride means. And yeah, so Break My Stride. Hi, everybody. I don't know if you're used to or even maybe heard of this song. I have no clue how old this song is. <laughs> but I've been, again, it's been stuck in my head, just like that one episode of the Rocky song was stuck forever. Well, this one's been stuck in my head, and I just know we have to talk about it so it can finally leave my brain. So <laughs> I'm going to read to you some of the lyrics. Um, it is called Break My Stride. I just want to read the little chorus part of it, and it says, Ain't nothing gonna break break a my stride. Nobody gonna slow me down. Oh no, oh no, I got to keep on moving. Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. I'm running and I won't touch ground. Oh no, I got to keep on moving. Um, and so I will only ever read it. Tanya will sing it for you maybe. I, I didn't ask her. <laughs> maybe she'll sing it for you. If not, you'll have to hop onto our TikTok to actually hear this song because it will be our promo for this video. Um, but yeah, so what does that mean? It means to me, like, why are we dressed like gladiators today? So if you prop up we are gladiators tanya and myself we've got our our weapons our warfare and everything going um she's got her sword i've got my bow and sword <laughs> so um but yeah so uh, i'm gonna keep actually the bow for this illustration today because that's actually what more i want i don't want to talk about but um I want to refer to Ephesians 6. So in Ephesians 6, in the scriptures, it talks about the armor of God. And it talks about, you know, being clothed with the armor of God so that you can withstand the wiles of the devil. Um, and it actually says withstand the fiery darts of the wicked ones. So, you know, like darts, like here we go. These darts are constantly coming against us, right? They're coming against us from um, just society, from news, from maybe good family and friends, um, enemies, frenemies, like from everybody, from, from all around you, you've got like these kind of fiery darts coming at you. And so um, the song Break My Stride, it talks about like, I think you have to have the heart of a warrior. You've got to have that tenacity and that perseverance of a warrior um, to not get broken to not um you know uh i guess get pushed back or fall into a pit or get derailed um if you're going to keep your stride and you're not going to break it you need to have good people around you i would say for number one number two you do need to have your own weapons of warfare so um scriptures actually say that our weapons are not carnal right they're spiritual weapons of warfare um and you know it's it's prayer and it's developing the fruits of being with the spirit of god like letting him speak to your heart and letting him minister to your life um and letting him build good fruit inside of you so that you can minister to other people out there and when i say minister i just mean just like being a source of positivity in somebody's life, right? And and instead of you breaking them up or trying to trip them up, you're the one who's going to, to extend a hand out and offer help in the time of need. Um, and in order for us to do that, we have to make sure that we're persevering and we're not listening to the darts of the wicked one, you know, or or the voices of people that they say they got your back, but in reality, they're actually shoving these arrows into your back um, with their words, with their thoughts, with their bad belief systems about you, you know. Um, there was actually, I wanted to, uh, I popped up a picture. I'd seen it today um, on a friend's post. She invited me to a group and um, I want to read it out loud. So um, this is not me. This is written by a woman named Connie Jacob. Um, and she's got a tribe called Brave Tribe. Uh, sorry, someone keeps calling me here. 
<laughs> you're trying to read it beyond the call here. So it says here, calling all wild ones, the extras, the ones who have been told you're too much and to tone it down. Don't you dare hide your light. It's a new season for you where people and words have sought to intimidate you, where you have felt rejected and crushed. It's a new day. I'm calling you out of the wilderness and into tribe that will release your message to the world with foundation and bravery. For too long, you've thought something is wrong with you. You've questioned whether your dreams to influence and help others can happen. Your courage has diminished into timidity and concern of what others think. You're, oh, sorry, someone called again. Okay. Your time to rise has come. Bravery happens in tribe. I've created this community for you and can't see, wait to see you rise. So when I say, you know, to have those around you, I mean people who believe in you, right? Because um, we do know that words have effect. You know, when they say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Like that's so not true because um, I think we, our skin heals from like brokenness and, and external, you know, like it's designed to heal. But when you wound somebody's heart, it's like, that's so much harder to heal, right? And actually only God can heal that. Um, he's the only one that turns stony hearts into flesh. And, um, you know, with enough bad words and enough unbelief thrown at you or enough, um, even like those, those words that come to like, yeah, what she said there, you're shining too bright, you're doing too much, you're going too fast, like, you know, uh, you're leaving me out or, or whatever. Like, no, you, you were created for a purpose and you have to continue to fight. You have to continue to run in your lane. You have to um, continue to keep picking up your weapons of warfare and fighting your battle because really uh, there's not a whole lot of other people that are going to fight that for you. Um, they're busy fighting their own battles. They may come alongside you um, to maybe hopefully take care of ones that you can't see that are attacking them as well as you. But really, I don't really know of too many people that are gonna lay down their life 100% of the time to just sit and pray for you and do everything for you and like fight your battle for you and live your life for you and become you. Like, honestly, I don't think people do that. I think they have their own life to live and they have their own fights to, to battle, you know? And, um, but you can link arms with other warriors and you can fight together just like David had a crew of mighty men um, and they did like mighty signs and wonders on the earth. Um, and he was able to get where he was today, I believe, because he had that tribe around him. Um, there is one more scripture I did want to say. So it was Matthew eleven twelve, and it talks about um, how the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So if you want to see more of you know, God's works in your life or like his miracle realm or his reality. And you're like in a place where you feel like you're in this deep, dark cave all by your lonesome. Like if you want to see some of that kingdom, it does mean taking on a spirit of violence. Yeah, it, it means like becoming more like a lion than being that little, you know, kitty cat. Like you have to grow your fangs <laughs> and your nails and you need to fight your way um, and know that there is one who, who is for you who did lay down his life you know when I said nobody else has done that right like but Jesus did so Jesus did and um, God he he gave he bankrupted heaven to give everything for you you know like you are not at a loss you're not at a lack you are actually not in reality not in that small dark cave with nothing and nobody around you Jesus did lay down his life for you and he has um, given you everything at access and if you want to find out what that is you just got to read the scriptures um, surround yourself with people other believing people who have testimonies on their life maybe in a battle or in an area that you're still struggling in and hopefully their tips and tricks are going to help you um, stand back up again um, and running running at your pace so um, I want to leave it off there uh, and bounce it back to Tanya and see what she has to say about nothing's gonna break my stride Take it away. Thank you, Elsa. I will take that away. <laughs> so, um, yeah, all the good points that she said, guys, is, is amazing. Um, so my take on nothing's going to break my stride. Well, I, too, want to start off with the scripture. Um, reason why I start off with scriptures is because these are the pinnacles or the, the pinpoint of where my life and I believe um, Elsa's life and those of you out there uh, life start 
because that's where life comes from, what God has said over your life. And um, so I'm going to read uh, 1 Timothy 6, 12, and it says, Fight the good fight of faith in the conflict with evil. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession of faith in the presence of many witnesses. That is so good. So, um, yeah, what it means to me is fighting that good fight of what Christ has done for us already, you know, has liberated everyone. Uh, if you receive him, every, he's liber liberated you. And now you can put on your armors, your swords, and just start holding your ground in whatever God has called you to do. Um, I just basically love, um, like I said, the scriptures. I love what God is talking about. That when he says, take, take hold of eternal life in which you were called. It's so good. Eternal life is... Um, something that obviously what it stands for you live forever you live for eternity um, I've always said in some of my other uh, videos you have eternal life and that is so good to know that God has um, you know given you that and now you can stand in what like I said whatever he's called you to do um, when people come and they try, like Elsa was explaining a, a few um, minutes ago about people bombarding you or, or the world coming and um, making you feel so small. Uh, stand up, take your sword, your helmet of salvation, your sword of truth, your shield of faith, and continue to keep walking, continue to keep standing in the midst of all the tornadoes or whatnot um, Jesus uh, did say that um, he was in the boat with his uh, disciples one time and the disciples were kind of like gee it was a big storm around and they were like master Jesus have you uh, why are you basically why are you sleeping we're about to die <laughs> and, and Jesus got up out of the boat now when I see Jesus get out of the boat I think of those um, that God has called to get up out of the boat and to speak to your storms, speak over um, the turmoil, the the rushing waters, the you know people around you that want to steer you off your path. You speak over that and say, you know, uh, hush, be still, as Jesus said with the storm, be still, and then the storms uh, basically were stilled. And then what happened was the, the disciples were looking and they were marveling at, what kind of guy is this? You know, those are the things that you can do when we talk about um, not breaking your stride to keep on the path that God has chosen you to do. And anything that derives out of your heart that gives you um, peace, that gives you joy, that uh, that gives you comfort and you're and you feel you're okay in that process. So um, yeah, keep on, um, that's what it kind of means to me is staying in your lane, staying in what God has showed you to do. And yes, the people around you probably, or the storms may come, but to stay um, standing in those storms and using that helmet of the salvation, the belt buckle of truth, the feet, your feet with the good, preparation of the gospel and your shield of faith so um yeah i i think that's everything that i i i believe i can give you my thoughts on nothing's gonna break my stride so i'll hand it back over to elsa <laughs> <laughs> great points i love how ours always go in tandem you know guys we don't ever really talk about what we're gonna talk about together we never share our points with each other before we record uh we honestly ever we only ever get a song our outfits and uh, <laughs> we don't even show our outfits to each other until we actually get on camera um but we have a theme we've got like the title of the song 
that's it. Like literally that's all we get. So whenever we come on here, um, it's the first time I'm hearing it is when Tanya's <laughs> sharing it. And first time she's hearing is when I'm sharing it. So I just love how just God brings things into tandem. And um, yeah, I, I want to have this little bit of like a, a bantering back and forth time as well. I know that a lot of times we're quick to intro, give our points, hop off. But um, I mean, we birthed this whole virtual kisses out of friendship. Um, and we had promised that we wanted to offer that same type of friendship to you guys, um, a peek into what our friendship looks like and everything. So I do want to take a few minutes at the end of whenever we share to have like these bantering moments back and forth and just see what happens, see what, what comes up. Um, maybe like a testimony from our journey or something like that. Um, and hopefully you'll, you'll see like our points in action, like, uh, or an illustration from our own life as to why we believe the things that we believe in and what we're sharing is not just like we just heard someplace. Um, it's it's obviously like what I shared resonated with me because I was already living that, you know, and what Tanya shared, I mean, with the scriptures, she's already been applying that. So I would say, you know, like if we were to talk about testimonies in our life, Tanya, like, I mean, we've got quite a few. Uh, I remember yeah. even when we were at our Dean's, um, there was that jacket and we knew it was for you. And it just yes. said fighter. It said fighter. So, you know, like, uh, you know, it's not just the gladiator. I mean, like that whole spirit of fighting is on your life. And I think it's been on your life ever since you were even little growing up because, you know, you're, you're a little bit petite and everything's so sure at school. <laughs> People would like think they could take advantage of your stature, right? Um, but you were always like that little fighter. So do you have like a story or illustration? <laughs> I would love for you to share that point. I'd like you guys to get to know us a little better. So I'd love if Tanya could share uh, that story. And that's the one that's coming to mind about fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and fighting as well. That's a good one, Elsa. <laughs> well, um, yeah, there was a time when um, <laughs> I was in school, um, junior high at the, at the time. And um, I, I was in a science class or maybe it's a science class and uh, my little sister she was in there and uh, we were in these rows and um, this um, native girl and I'm not saying native people are bad I'm just saying um, that was her ethnicity yeah, her background <laughs> and she got up and she was basically taunting my sister and I felt in my heart like no, oh no, 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 not my little sister. And it kept going for a bit until finally I just, I got up and I, you know, went over and I said, what's your guys' problem? And this girl is bigger than me. <laughs> and um, next thing I know, it we got into this uh, little fight and um, ended up, yeah, I ended up um, saving my sister from getting beat up. Uh, I didn't get beat up, by the way. <laughs> I kind of um, fought back, and from that moment on, um, ended up, as in school, you end up in the principal's office, but I didn't really get suspended. Just to say that, I wasn't, I was okay. Uh, but my, um, the one who started it, um, she ended up uh, getting suspended for a couple of days. But the whole point of it was, um, uh, I didn't like the, the taking advantage of my sister or, um, you know, um, picking on her because of whatever reason. Um, uh, the fact that uh, after, uh, after the, the fact that the fight happened, that basically put us an end to any um, thing that would happen between me and my sister or, or myself even. People are like, oh, look out. Little, little fighters around or you know they they usually would stay away but um yeah it was more of a courage going through that it was more of um being courageous like david um i didn't i felt inside like oh no like very jittery and you know maybe i should stay out of it all this stuff that's going through your head but um the fact that I stepped out and stopped the fact stopped um, something that could have maybe uh, carried on for a lifetime with my my sister or my even myself because as I am uh, very little in stature, but the fact that um, now people that happened 
And I'm not condoning fighting, guys. I'm not condoning <laughs> physical <laughs> fighting. This is way before, you know, way, way, way back. I'm not condoning before it. Before God, before God, we're talking. Before God. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the feeling of, um, yeah, you have the fight in you. You have, um, you know, that stand up. You're not going to take um, bullies. Um, it, uh, in your life or even you know like i said with my sister's life i would not i would not stand for that and that's kind of like what we're talking uh, uh today about uh, not letting people interfere with what god has for your for your life and not squishing you down and making you feel small so i hope that helped you and i'm going to um, uh, well <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to pass it off to Elsa, but before I do, I want to ask you, Elsa, since we're on the topic of fight, mm -hmm. do you, do you remember when, um, you had a similar situation when you kind of lived, uh, not inside the city, but kind of outside the city? Yes. In Devon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I grew up in a small town. So funny. Cause I was thinking of that story as you were sharing and I was just like, why is this picture coming to mind? Okay. So I told Tanya this story long ago. Um, I, I don't know. I told grade. you mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I'm going to share mine. So, I mean, I, I, you could say spirit of violence. You don't just, I don't know. I think you have to work at it, right? Like, I mean, I, with me and you, we obviously already kind of had that a violent spirit. <laughs> <laughs> with God, without God, we kind of had that. So we brought it into the kingdom, right? And got it all, you know, good and kosher there. But before God. So I remember that I, I was like, I don't know how old I was, but I remember that my sister and I would um, usually walk together to go back to school. And um, I was running late as usual. And so then I just said, well, you go ahead, uh, you go ahead walking and I'm going to take the bike. I'm going to bike instead and I'll catch up with you. Um, so I took my time having my lunch and she was already gone walking to school and uh, I, I come along on my bike and I'm just like, you know, biking behind and I see two boys on a bike, you know, alongside my little sister pushing her and shoving her and you know because I think I shared about racism in our town and everything so they were calling her like you know names like, like chink and all this kind of stuff you know because they all thought we were Chinese or whatever they made fun of Asians period and they didn't want any Asians in their town so they're just shoving her and shoving her and and just like calling her names and here I'm coming on my bike and when I when I saw that my eyes just went boop like you know this cartoon <laughs> rage <laughs> so, <laughs> I go breaking up there and I just remember like I threw my bike to the ground and I grabbed them <laughs> by, their, <laughs> by their shirts here I threatened to kill them both I was just like you know you ever touch my sister again I will kill you you go say sorry and you know they apologized to my sister uh, they never they never bothered her again which is great but you know I think that's that's one thing like with this is applying um, boundaries like, mm -hmm. you know, not letting people bully you like what Tanya was saying and not letting them um, put their opinions upon you and put their mold upon you and put their thoughts. They, they can have those thoughts if they want, but keep it to yourself. You know, like, yeah. don't let them form you with those thoughts and with those words and with their prejudice and their stereotypes. And, mm -hmm. you know, because we are not the sum of that, right? Like the word of God says so much in there about who we are and how he's made us. And there's like so much that God's written into each and every one of us. And he's written upon our hearts. He has a book upon our life um, that he's waiting for the world to see. Right. Um, and we don't want other authors in there. Like, don't let these bullies become authors in that book. Let good, 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 good friends, friendship, people, fr you know, your family, those who will back you, those who will jump in and fight on your behalf um, and help you through those things. They won't fight for you, but they will help you, right? Uh, after that, you've got to continue to keep those boundaries. You have to continue to believe in yourself. You have to continue to take courage, right? And not lose heart. And you have to be the gladiator. I can't imagine that, you know, like I watch Wonder Woman the gladiator warriors and they couldn't just all of a sudden in the middle of the fight in the beach just go ah, i'm gonna take a breather like, i'm gonna lay back <laughs> i'm gonna sit here and you know let someone else fight my battles like i mean like arrows are sh getting shot at them there's people coming at them the enemy will not stop so right. you know the enemy doesn't stop 
you don't stop. And if you see somebody stopping alongside the road who's on the same journey as you, stop and help lift them up, right? Because one day somebody's going to help you when you're in the pit. Um, right. Just like how Tanya helped your sister and I helped my sister and people have helped us. And even with Tanya and I, we have helped each other. Um, a lot of it has been more verbal assault, I would say, uh, not physical assault um, since becoming Christians. <laughs> We hung up those boxing gloves, but um, <laughs> I would say verbal assault. So like, you know, there's times when me and you would be stepping into something brand new um, and, you know, like people could come and say things against us and say, you know, just tell us to stop or tell us to step down or stop, like, don't do that. Um, and because we would come and submit it to one another, like, do you think I need to do that? Am I becoming like that? We would actually trust each other to bring that to one another well right? Elsa, there was a time um we did end up um going to one of our um classes um one i, I feel it was ministry like a prophetic, yeah ministry yeah. school and we um we were just listening and uh, we were do doing prophetic uh words and whatnot and I, do you remember um there was this lady do you want to give a little bit more insight on that? Yeah. So I remembered, like, I mean, I was, I. Uh, so just so you guys know, I hated speaking in front of people. This is, I mean, we're fast forwarding now into my life, but way back then, forward. yeah, way fast forward. But in school, <laughs> I took zeros. I never once ever did a public speech um, or debates or oral reading. I actually would skip those classes. When I found out that there was oral reading due, I would take a zero. And I'd work extra hard on my quizzes and tests and uh, lessons just to make up for all the zeros I knew I was going to take for every oral exam, everything, right? Um, so I was never one that wanted to speak in front of people. Um, I prefer to be in the background or be behind the curtain or be behind a camera. Um, and so that being said, when I was finally doing this ministry school with Tanya, um, she, had, she had pulled me out of my little cave and <laughs> we decided to, you know, it's time to learn. We went into ministry school and um, the speakers took interest. They took interest in my life story and my testimony. And they were kind of encouraging me and pushing me to like step uh, in front of people and speak. My, my number one fear, right? The thing I did not want to do. Um, so it took a lot. Like it took a lot. Like even if I would go and be invited to speak with somebody, I would have to have my crew and my tribe. Like Tanya a lot of times would come. My brother and his wife would come. And some of my other tribe members would come, right? Um, just to support me. And I needed that. I needed that like just encouragement um, because I was facing a major fear in my life. Um, so this was during... Uh, a conference so this was like it was during ministry school but they had opened it up now to the public and we were the students were going to minister now to public people like these right. are like not, not students i'm speaking to <laughs> these i don't know these people <laughs> these are people coming from everywhere <laughs> coming to this big conference because we've got speakers coming and everything and i was invited to come and share my testimony as uh while these speakers were speaking as well and so as i did i remembered like you know, Tanya would be there encouraging me like, oh, this is awesome. You got to speak. You got to share, you know, and same with my brother and his wife and everything. And, and other students came alongside and, and encouraged. But uh, I remember coming off the stage and um, God had talked to me about being careful. He wanted me to be watchful because he knew this was a brand new area for me. And right. so I remember that a woman came. She said, can I can I talk to you privately for a second? Um, she was one of the students. And I was like, sure. Well, God shows me a picture of someone I know on it. Someone I've had, um, how would you say, like tension with in the past and uh, problems with in the past. And she would like always misjudge me and cast things against me. And so... I saw this picture of this her face go upon this person's face and I knew right away God was like okay like record this so I like I took out my phone I was like do you mind if I record this I like to record everything and she was like oh you could tell she's kind of taken back but already that put a boundary up in a way a little bit of a protective boundary but even though I was recording she still came at me and was just like you know you shouldn't be speaking you need to go and you're too young you're too young to be speaking and you haven't lived enough a life and you know um my husband had just passed away and God had just restored me through obviously grieving happens for over a long period but I had a major healing testimony that came out of that from being in the school and that's what I was sharing on and she was kind of like you know you need to learn how to live in a cave well she didn't know my life Tanya knew my life I I been always in a cave I'd always been hidden um this was my first time coming out and she was casting her judgment saying you need to go back in now 
her voice was joining on to the fears I already had. Right. That was battling, right? So I would say it was trying to form a stronghold. So no longer were they just like little arrows sticking in my back. I mean, they kind of had found a bullseye, put it that way. So it bullseye, it, it landed. And when I told you, Tanya, I you can't cut that off. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you jumped to my defense, right? And you sat there and said, no, you have been in a game. What are you talking about? And because you'd lived my journey God with has me. called you <laughs> for the time like this. God is, you know, working in your life. You got to keep going. Yes, so. don't break your stride, basically. <laughs> That's what you did. No one's going to break your stride. No one's going to hold you down. Uh-oh. Oops. You got to move and move and move. <laughs> you got to keep on moving. <laughs> so, and you've had similar too, right? Because of, that was one of your major fears as well was speaking um, live. I would say live <laughs> <laughs> like this, with especially with people you don't know that well. Like with me, you're okay, but with people you don't know, you were you were kind of more of a challenge, right? That um, is so true. So you went <laughs> Sure. Um, actually, it was actually this year. Um, I it also had her turn with um, with God, and um, I, this there was this dream um, I had way before that was more like a rollerblading dream, where um, she was ahead of me, but I was right behind her, and uh, I knew my time would be coming soon, but I didn't know when. But I was watching everything that that Elsa had, so. Uh, what was happening in her life and encouraging and whatnot. So when it was my turn, so it actually happened this year where um, I ended up um, um, finding uh, a really cool guy. Any of you know him, uh, his name is Polly V. And um, I ended up going to one of his uh, prophetic online classes. And um, he saw something about me that needed to be sparked and he kind of encouraged and at first, I was talking to Elsa like, I can't do this. <laughs> and she ended up saying, yes, yes, you can. It's good. It's good. So um, I remember going um, nights uh, praying to God, like, I don't know. How, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I partner with somebody I don't really know? But I, I, I'm so excited about this this um, this adventure that God's putting me to. And um, after a while, I attended his class and he says, you should come join me in um, one of his uh, uh, teaching schools, which is called uh, Sonship Lifestyle Prophetic Alliance. And I ended up going in um, with Polly and ended up having some um, FaceTime, like just like what we're doing right here. Uh, I was kind of nervous again, but uh, the first couple of times it was it was great um i did another a prophetic live with elsa just to calm my nerves saying okay if i could do it with her more it'll be great so i i did maybe five or maybe i think four or five teachings with polly and uh it started to become real i started to come out the way god wanted me to come out and uh, all the fears and worries that I had all kind of drifted away because God approved me in those places. So, um, yeah, uh, just it's exciting. <laughs> but I stood, like I stood where I needed to go, and it brings pat or brings to pass the dreams that God was confirming in our lives that. Um, we're rollerblading really fast um, this year uh, and the years to come. I really believe this, that anything uh, she goes through, I'll go through too. Why do you <laughs> I'll see her go through the battles and I'll encourage her. And then, um, you know, when it's my turn, turn. <laughs> she's backing me up too. But most of those things, guys, we're cutting them down with... Um, with our swords, with our our shields of faith, with our um, words that God has put over our life, we're we're smashing down the enemies. Just like we talked really early in the segment about bullies, we are smashing them down, and we are going for the grand prize of ultimately of bringing who Christ looks like. 
-hmm. in this earth. So I'm here today, guys, and I'm on our new uh, little talk show um, that God has inspired in our life. As you can see up there, it says virtual kisses. <laughs> and this is where I am today. And I feel more confident than I did uh, maybe a few months ago. So, yeah. That yeah, is a really growing journey. Growing journey. And I remember too, like, I think right before you were asked to to go and do this because you were like oh, I don't know I gotta pray about it I gotta pray about it and I was like wait I remember that word I gave you it was a time when we had a bunch of our tribe together we were praying for one another and a word was I saw you on a bike built for two God had a bike built yes. for two he was going to be taking you tandem like That's two so duos true. right yeah. um, and, and that you know just to enjoy the ride the, don't worry so much about the technical stuff and whatever but um, just paying attention and enjoying the ride and, and knowing that you're with the father so it was like I think the biggest thing was that you'd be like I don't want to do this alone and it's like but you're not alone God's that with you that was my right? biggest worry yeah no, and it was like smashing a lie cutting down the lie that you were alone yeah. when you weren't alone because god was on that duo yeah. bike with you and everything that you're doing and um now we're no longer you know pulling people up by their you know shirts and threatening to kill them like now we're doing <laughs> that to lies we're doing yeah. that to like um any kind of mindsets or words that come against each other we are doing that same kind of viciousness and violence against that right um no longer do we take it against a physical person um yeah. That's where that changes in the kingdom, but you don't stop. You have to keep on fighting. And and uh, yeah, there will be rest times and things like this. Maybe when other people will help you in your battles, but you cannot give up. You cannot stop. You have to continue to go. And uh, yeah, Tanya continued and look where she is today. You're also teaching on the actual, um, that ministry line. You are even teaching your own course on it now too. So you're not even doing a duo tandem you're actually by yourself with God. I'm by myself with God. Yes, yes. So <laughs> you can see that where that fighting and that holding on has already bore like a lot of fruit in your life. And yeah, so. And so uh, as you, Elsa, um, going through all that, she ended up, guys, um, taking a ministry spot in actual the, the church. And, um, you know, it took a while, but she had to eventually um, leave. But uh, the fact that she went through it with God and stuck with um, what he has called her forth to be and who she is, um, I, I found it really courageous. And uh, yeah, just watching her like what she's wearing, her her uh, <laughs> army outfit like in Wonder Woman, right? Um, she's she's taken down battles that were great i thought they were great like huge things coming against her but um she took them well and uh she's gotten through it and i am just basically i was in awe like in everything that she's gone through so yeah that's my take on everything <laughs> Thanks. Well, because you helped me. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> we did not do this alone, guys. We don't High five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we encourage that for you guys. We hope that our little stories of how we did it in our friendship, how we did it even for, in our families, um, how we do fight for others that we believe in, um, that you would find that tribe and you'd find those ones who will stand beside you and fight with you and fight for you um, and stand with you, stand with you. I know that they're your giants, but they will stand with you. They won't run and hide and leave you alone to take it. And if you don't have one yet, like there is one, there, God. God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you, right? And um, Jesus can be that rock in your life to shatter everything that's set before you if you'll trust him. So we hope that these stories helped you. Um, we are going to obviously take them these uh, little segments a little bit longer than normal now. Um, let us know if you like this format brand new format right so hopefully you do like this and you like us sharing a little more from our life like we did um yeah anything else you wanted to say before i wrap things up uh, no but oh no. yes sorry just one more thing elsa sure. to let the viewers know you guys are courageous like kings and queens we've talked about and if you've seen any of our videos you guys are kings and queens here on the earth so um go forth in what god has called you to do awesome yes yeah. Great reminder. And remember, guys, uh, to not let anything break your stride. Uh, if you do want to follow us on other formats, because I know a lot of people are hopping off Facebook. Um, we are on YouTube. We're on TikTok. TikTok promos. YouTube, same video. So, um, yeah, if you're going to 
one day cancel out Facebook, follow us on our YouTube channel. We'd love for you to subscribe to any of our spots and join the community. And at any time, you are welcome to drop in comments and give us a like, give us a heart, um, and just hit the bell for notifications as well. Um, if you want to know whenever our next video is, we do like to release these weekly. So I think that's it for today. We hope you love our outfits um, and that you enjoy the rest of your week and that you're going to pick up your battle swords and your your uh, bow and arrow and not take it anymore, but that you're going to give it instead <laughs> and be that shining light today in the world that the world needs. So um, we want to sign off and till next week, virtual kisses from our house to yours. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.